Over the course of just a few short years, how did a simple dirt road in Ohio end up rivaling the beauty of Les Champs-Élysées in Paris? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the lost neighborhood known as Millionaire's Row in Cleveland, Ohio. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. When Rufus Dunham began looking for a new farm, he had no idea that he would be purchasing what would soon become some of the country's most valuable real estate. He followed Euclid Avenue from Cleveland until it turned into a dirt road out in the countryside. It was a pleasant, unspoiled landscape with mature trees and large flat pastures. The 140 acres were pristine and untouched by man. It was exactly the setting he had dreamed of for settling down with his family. But there was just one problem. The dirt road became muddy with even the lightest rainfall which led to his horses and stagecoach becoming stuck in the mud. He set out to enhance the road, installing a rudimentary drainage system. This caught the attention of nearby Cleveland, as the once treacherous road was now consistently traversable. Cleveland's wealthiest residents were the first to take note, and began chipping in to further improve Euclid Avenue, many of them discovering the untamed beauty of the wilderness for the first time. Within a short amount of time, the road had been widened with manicured gardens gracing the oversized sidewalks, and wealthy families had funded the construction of churches and schools as they planned a new community, which would become known as Millionaire's Row. Perhaps the most famous residence was that of John D. Rockefeller, who was quick to build his Second Empire-style mansion. Though it was not as large as some of the homes we are about to see, it was unique in that the facade was planned to be symmetrical, incorporating three street-facing Palladian windows. His business partner, the chemist Samuel Andrews, built his house just down the street in the Richardsonian Romanesque style. The erratic placement of architectural elements seemingly slapped on the house drew critique for being tasteless. And to make matters worse, the layout of the house favored form over function to such an extreme that it was not possible for staff to service the home, navigating a maze of interior features. So the house was immediately abandoned and stood empty in a thriving neighborhood, gaining the nickname Andrew's Folly. Down the street was the largest home on Millionaire's Row, the house of Sylvester T. Everett, a successful financier. Sylvester intended for his home to last for all of time and ordered the walls to be constructed out of four-foot-thick stone blocks. The facade of the Richardsonian Romanesque-style house featured intricate stone carvings, especially around the archways where we could see flowers, vines, and other natural motifs paired with geometric reliefs. No surface on the exterior was left unadorned with busts and drama masks worked into the least noticeable corners. Further down the street was Cleveland's most modern home, the Charles Francis Brush Mansion. Charles had invented the arc lamp and was the first to incorporate electricity into his Greystone house via a wind turbine generator which powered 12 batteries to light the home. Charles would invite clients and investors to his home where he would show off his basement laboratory. The house was described to be just as eccentric as the man who built it with wall paneling crafted from Japanese rosewood and abstract designs by Louis Comfort Tiffany worked into the stained glass windows. In his will, Charles mandated that the house, along with any inventions on the property, were to be destroyed upon his death, and so they were. Next on our tour is the Tom Johnson House. Johnson invented the toolbox for trolleys and made a fortune with his patent. With that fortune, he built a meandering stone house which quickly became overgrown with ivy. During his time living here, he became the mayor of Cleveland. As time went on, Cleveland grew larger and larger. The city was spreading into what was once the countryside, and the once idealistic neighborhood was being surrounded by skyscrapers. One by one, the wealthy residents sold their homes to businesses. One of these homes was even used as a car dealership before being torn down. By the 1930s, the Great Depression had taken its toll on Millionaire's Row and the last remaining residents had no other option but to sell their homes. In the 1950s, during urban renewal, a freeway was planned to cut through the neighborhood, demolishing the mansions in its path. Within 10 years, the area had become slums. The few decaying mansions which once housed some of the nation's most elite were considered substandard and demolished. Today, only a handful of homes and buildings from the neighborhood survive, though none in their entirety. The Mather Mansion is perhaps the most intact, though it has been gutted to accommodate the uses of Cleveland State University. While the freeway has certainly served the city, many continue to ask if the trade-off was worth it. Was it worth losing the city's architectural heritage for convenience? 
Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.